Welcome to our Northampton community television audience. This is Rick Haggerty kicking it for peace, culture, and education right here on 103.3 FM Northampton Valley Free Radio. And welcome back to our uh, Valley Free Radio listeners. I'm here with uh, Bruce Watson, and Bruce has an online weekly magazine. It's called The Attic for a Kinder, Cooler America, American History, Arts, and Literature, and they are true stories and Bruce, uh, welcome. So uh, I'm so happy to have you here. And uh, thanks for uh, getting up early and driving, you know, driving in. Well, The Attic comes out on, uh, for its subscribers just about this time every Sunday. So this is somehow appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. We're fitting right in here. So uh, let's get started. And uh, I'd like to talk about uh, um, you know, how, you, um, how you decided to uh, uh, get this started. It's such a cool thing. I've, you know, I, I, as I mentioned, I read the... Uh, uh, the the uh, surfing surf city right, yeah. yeah surf city that was that was awesome so mm-hmm. tell us about it well I've been a journalist in this area and nationwide uh, for twenty some years but I mostly have focused on history and uh, American historical culture and uh, cultural history and um, during the wonderful and exciting 2016 election when we were all having so much fun watching the country <laughs> be trashed uh, uh, it occurred to me toward the end. Uh, when I thought, as everyone else did, uh, who I knew was going to win, it occurred to me that even if she won, the country's history was going down the toilet in some ways. It was being polarized, polemicized. Uh, it was turning into us versus them. America can do no wrong versus America can do no right. And the types of articles that I used to write for Smithsonian Magazine and for the Gazette and also for uh, American Heritage weren't getting out there, at least I couldn't see them. And so that type of history, not a feel-good history, but something about American history that isn't us versus them, just wasn't getting out there. And I decided maybe what I could do to my pitch in my part would be to start a website. And uh, I didn't know what to call it at the time, but I thought if I could do an article a week and uh, sort of fill it up and write short articles that people could read, people could understand that we are more than the sum of our arguments. And so I started The Attic. On Inauguration Day, by the way, oh, although wow. I stay away from politics. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, uh, uh, that's a, a good enough reason. Mm. <laughs> you know, I really... That was my goal and I made it. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Well, it's a really cool thing. And, you know, I want to I tell folks right away that, uh, you know, they can catch, uh, they can catch Bruce uh, on his uh, Facebook page. I have right? a Facebook That's, page, yeah. uh, The Attic, and of course, The Attic itself, I'm going to say this a few times, is at www.theattic.space. Uh, theattic.space. Yes. So um, That was cheaper than theattic.com. And, uh, oh, nice. Okay. And it works out <laughs> as a sort of ring to it. Okay. So now, The Attic. Um, I love that because uh, I see pictures there of you like in an attic and uh, <laughs> and you call it the attic. So, so why don't you tell us uh, where the name come from? What's that all about? Well, I have a great attic in my house and nice. that's part of it, but nice. more, it's got sort of a triple meaning. Uh, when I wrote for Smithsonian Magazine, uh, the institution itself is often called America's Attic and there's Elvis's comb and Charlie uh, Archie Bunker's chair and things like that. So that's a, a reference. My own head has become over the years kind of like an attic. And then I never quite know what American story I'm gonna find when I go up there. So I thought, well, that's a good idea. You can rummage in this website. You can, you never do quite know what you're gonna find. I have stories on American history, literature, women. Uh, um, I have a number of travel articles. I have a whole section on humor. Uh, so there are various, uh, you never quite know what's gonna come up next week. One week it might be Langston Hughes. One week it might be Doris Huerta. Uh, as you said, I went out to Huntington Beach, California, and wrote an article on Surf City. <laughs> I grew up out there. Uh, this week's article is on Dartmouth College and the wonderful mural there and a story behind it. So it's all I'm all over the place, and uh, I'm having a great time. Fantastic. So I, I see the, uh, the conservative and the communist. When a radical Mexican uh, muralist began to uh, paint uh, at Dartmouth, uh, some uh, some wanted his work destroyed, and the college president refused. So that's the uh, Dartmouth, Dartmouth reference. Yeah, we'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, that's, totally. That's today's uh, post. Totally. Now, um, I, I like this, and it sounds great. True stories for a kinder, cooler America. 
And uh, is that the kind of like uh, feel good sort of thing? Is that what you're trying to? I'm uh, trying put to do. I, it could be branded that, but I'd <laughs> rather go. Uh, I hope it goes a little deeper. I mean, there are messages here, and there, as you'll see, and there are lessons that we can learn. And there are, um, it, it suggests to me a broader America, it's not, there is, a, there is a whole movement now, given the horrors that we're seeing every day in the news, there is a whole movement. I, the New York Times now has a series of good news articles, good news from the week and other yeah, things. I've seen that. My yeah. first job, ironically, in the newspaper business was in a good newspaper, so I know what that's about. It can be shallow. I'm trying not to do that. Uh, these are articles about Americans who really fought the trend of, uh, of um, well, both of whatever the political t trend of their times was, uh, but found hope in the country and in its ideals. For example, uh, one of the ones I think I'll read next week on, on the show here is uh, Let America Be America Again. Everybody now by now pretty much knows that Langston Hughes poem and how wonderful it is, but the story of how he wrote it in the middle of the Depression, riding on a train, home to see his mother who had just been diagnosed with cancer really uh made me uh, almost cry it was it's stunning wow. it's a stunning yeah. poem and a very moving story and that's the type of thing i'm looking for awesome let america be the dream the dreamers dream yes. let it be that great strong land of love where never kings uh, connive nor tyrants scheme by the that way i should mention that <clears throat> excuse me the wonders of the web. It's so much fun to make a website because you can go, I, I spent years just writing and um, writing words. And um, when I do uh, web, I can go get video. So I have a fantastic video of an actress reading that poem nice. in a New York market. Nice. Uh, last week I did Edward R. Murrow and I went out and I got the recordings and put them on there. And, and so you can, if you're reading the story, you can click and you can hear Murrow. That's yeah. the great thing about the web. And I try to use that as much as I can. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And I, I see that. That uh, uh, Abina uh, Kumson actually right yes. right mm -hmm. on the uh, uh, the attic dot space um, where I'm looking over this article and there's the video right there so that is really fantastic and uh, as Bruce mentioned I'm just so happy that he's going to be a part of kicking it for peace culture and education uh, he's going to be on another show here. Uh, you know, presenting, you know, what he's doing with the attic as well. But he will be a weekly contributor right here. Uh, he'll be calling in uh, his articles. And thanks so much for doing no that. Problem. I mean, it's, I'm really, uh, you know, when I, when I saw that, uh, uh, when I saw that uh, email come through uh, our program director, I thought, man, this sounds really cool. Let me check it out. Um, so uh, thanks so much. Um, now, it must be... Um, I mean, there's so much out there uh, for a writer, you know, to write about. Um, and how do you, you know, how do you whittle it down to what you're, you're going to post on your website, website and what you're going to, uh, you know, what you're going to write about? Well, it's hard. I, I feel like my beat is American culture. And, um, so I try to make a balance of stories. Honestly, if I haven't done a story, um, about women in a while and I have a dozen up here, but, uh, I'll see, oh, it's been a few weeks. Okay. I've got to focus a little bit that way or something where I've lacked history or people of color. I will, I will try to make that diverse, that diversity. Beyond that, I really look for uh, stories that just pop up in my head. I'm always reading um, history. I just read Jill Lepore's fantastic new book, uh, These Truths. So I put a list up of six truths from her. I, by the way, I should also add, everybody loves lists these days, so I've got a bunch of American lists. Um, nice. yeah. And um, so whatever I come across... Um, as I read, as I watch, I'll, I'll just think that would be a good attic story. I, I make a list of them. I go to the UMass library. I schlep about 70 books home. <laughs> and I've Incredible. got them up. I yeah, put them amazing. in the attic till their <laughs> turn is there. And then I, nice. yeah, I just follow up. Fantastic. And, you know, we, we talked about uh, baseball uh, before yep. we came on the air. And, you know, our, our Red Sox are, uh, you know, moving right along here. I like this. The chicken who saved baseball. Baseball oh, was a, a fading relic. Then... Uh, uh, who is it? Uh, the chaplain-esque sort of. People don't. Uh, uh, yeah, out here dude. on the East Coast, I don't know if y'all saw the San Diego chicken, but I was in Southern California in the seventies when this guy, this college student, Amazing. put on a chicken suit just as a uh, not for fun. He was hired by a local zoo, uh, by the San Diego Zoo, and he said to himself, "I did a lot of research. Listen to this guy." Um, he said, I bet I could get in the baseball game with these. So he <laughs> called the Padres, and they were the worst drawing team in the league. And he turned out, he didn't even know this about himself, but he was he had this gift for mime. And he started going out on the field and chasing umpires and taking headfirst slides. And people 
just <laughs> loved him, and within and we all loved him as great. People would go to the game just to see the chicken because they didn't. The Padres weren't see, worth seeing, and so uh, within a few years, everybody had mascots and really shook baseball up a little. Yeah, yeah. So it started with this guy. I mean, yeah. this is the oh he, you know, man. The thing is, he's still doing start. it. He's sixty five. Really? He's, yeah. He's, <laughs> I saw. I was at a minor league game with my son a few years ago, and who comes out? The San Diego Chicken. I thought it can't be the same guy, but it was. <laughs> Fantastic. And uh, folks, if you just tuned in, I'm here with uh, Bruce Watson, uh, talking about his online weekly magazine, The Attic, for a kinder, cooler America, American history, arts. And literature, true stories, and women, and and women, mm-hmm. and uh, food. And right? food coming up this coming month is uh, Food Month in the attic. I've never done a theme month, but I'm going to do that for the first time. Yeah, fantastic! And uh, you can check it out at uh, theattic.space, and uh, you can uh, contribute there as well. There's a donate button. You can subscribe. I recommend people uh, do that. That's important for a writer to continue writing, and. Uh, you also can uh, check out his uh, Facebook page as well. And I do want to say uh, this is WXOJ 103.3 FM Northampton, 103.3 FM streaming online at valleyfreeradio.org. Okay, so um, let's see. So how about, uh, would you like to uh, do a reading? It's just uh, sure. might be a good, uh, uh, good time to do that. Okay. Um, well, backstory yeah, here. Sure. Um, I was reading just here and there uh, and read, read to my surprise at, at Dartmouth, uh, just a couple hours up the road, uh, there's a mural by Jose Clemente Orozco, one of the major uh, Mexican muralists, uh, contemporary of Diego Rivera. It's in the basement of the library. And I thought, well, I'd, it's nice up there this time of year. I think I'll go up there. That'd be a good um article for the attic i had no idea what a, what the back the full backstory was but i discovered it in the process so if you can picture down in the basement of uh of this library this very stately library at extremely stately dartmouth college these this mural with capitalists g- grabbing up uh, gold coins and pancho villa and uh and quetzalcoatl and other things uh there must be a story behind this thought i here's the story the dateline is dartmouth college This is the story of two men, a radical Mexican muralist and a conservative college president who shared, quote, an American idea. The idea was the value of open minds. Embraced by an unlikely pair, this idea left Dartmouth with both a masterpiece and a lesson in what we mean by liberal arts. As the liberal arts colleges go, Dartmouth is rather conservative. Founded by a minister, chartered by a king, the New Hampshire College seems as buttoned down as its brick facades. Dr. Seuss went here, as did Mr. Rogers from TV, but more typical alumni include 164 congressmen, three cabinet members, and countless corporate CEOs. Dartmouth also hosted the fraternity made famous in the movie Animal House. (laughs) But enter the Baker Library, pass the students staring into phones, and head downstairs. There in the basement stands what one art historian called the most significant mural decoration ever made in our country. The epic of American civilization begins with towering bronzed Aztecs. It ends with capitalists in top hats gobbling up coins. In between lie revolution, crosses, skeletons, snakes, and Pancho Villa. And over in one corner is a signature, J.C. Orozco, February 13, 1934. During the depths of the Depression, Jose Clemente Orozco came to Dartmouth from his native Mexico. The Baker Library was new and needed decoration. Orozco was given $500 in Rockefeller money, Nelson Rockefeller was a recent Dartmouth alum, to show students how the old art of fresco, paint applied to wet plaster, was being revived by Mexican muralists. Short and stocky with thick glasses, Orozco looked as bookish as the students who watched him work from from a wooden scaffold. But he had survived an impoverished childhood and the bloody Mexican Revolution. The world was torn apart around us, he remembered. Troop convoys passed on their way to slaughter. Trains were blown up. The revolution turned Orozco into a political painter, infusing his work with myth, history, and, quote, art in the service of the worker. So when, after three months in Europe, he came back to Dartmouth to begin his fiery epic, old Yankee money was, ahem, concerned. A group calling itself the Boston Mothers wrote to Dartmouth's president, shouldn't the college, quote, do as much as possible to uplift students? Why not decorate the library with, quote, beautiful scenery rather than hideous subjects? 
We would be everlastingly grateful to you, the Boston mothers told the college president, if the pictures could be destroyd. Another letter was less polite. Orozco has shouted forth in paint the Communist Manifesto. Dartmouth's president had already written to a friend, acknowledging that Orozco was, as he called it, a flaming red communist. Yet Ernest Hopkins was not afraid of ideas. Hopkins had grown up struggling, working in granite quarries, before using his own Dartmouth education to enter business. He had come to believe, he said, that it was not the form of a man's activity or even his association which defined either good or bad citizenship, but rather what was the nature of the man himself. Now the lifelong Republican defended the flaming red communist and his right to free speech. Responding to the Boston mothers, Hopkins wrote, There are 100% Americans who have objected to the fact that we employed a Mexican to do this work, but I have never believed that art could be made either racial or national. As to the images not being nice, Hopkins wrote, if that be a criterion of judgments, many of the great works of the medieval masters would have to be removed from the Louvre. Month after month, Orozco applied paint to wet plaster. Across the walls spread, com- spread cannons and chains, huddled mass- masses, four grisly gods of the modern world. Even as Orozco worked in a library basement, the more celebrated Diego Rivera was painting at Rockefeller Center in Manhattan. But when Rivera put Lenin on one wall, he was fired. The mural was destroyed. Orozco kept working. The position Dartmouth was taking, Orozco remembered, expressed one of the most highly prized of American virtues, freedom of speech and thought, of conscience and the press, the freedoms of which the American people have always been justifiably proud. The Mexican artist spent two years at the New England town. He found Dartmouth delicious in winter. The woods, the snow, the country folk... Students got him to judge an ice sculpture contest, an art he found stupendous. Faculty welcomed him into classes, and when he finished, they threw him a gala dinner where the muralist and the college president toasted to Orozco's, quote, American idea, developed into American forms, American feeling, and as a consequence, into American style. Today, students at the Baker Library seem not to notice the epic of American civilization. They come and go, ordering books, staring into their phones. But here in the basement, what one art historian called a great jeweled cup overflowing its conventional brim is more than a masterpiece. It is a tribute to an American idea that is not dried into plaster. Fantastic. That is such a great article. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, It's a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, uh, folks, if you just tuned in, we're speaking with... uh, Bruce Watson, he's talking about his online weekly magazine, The Attic, for a kinder, cooler America, American history, arts, and literature, true stories, and you can check that out at theattic.space, and please uh, donate there and become a member, and uh, you also can check him out uh, with his Facebook page, uh, The Attic, and we're going to take a short break, I really appreciate uh, folks uh, tuning in, and uh, we... uh, Uh, Love our uh, viewers at Northampton Community Television as well. And again, we're here with uh, Bruce Watson. He's talking about The Attic, his online weekly magazine for a kinder, cooler America, American history, arts, literature, and true stories. And so let's get right back to it. Uh, Time is short here. Um, So we uh, we talked about the uh, Attic articles and your sources for research. You wanted to mention that as well. Yeah. um, I hated history when I was in high school, let's face it. With all due apologies to my history teachers, uh, you know, I'm 17 and history didn't reach me. So not until I was 30 or 35 did I start what's become a career in American history, really. So I'm very sensitive to the notion that history is dry, can be dry, can be um, uh, one damn thing after another, as some people say. So I use as many first-person stories as I uh, can, first-person sources. I use quotes and letters. Um, I try to make every character come alive. I, it's something I did when writing for Smithsonian and others. So this is... This is journalism history. I don't have a PhD. I'm not a. I'm not an academic historian. I'm a hopefully a lively, uh, engaging historian who writes from uh, from the heart and the heart of people who I'm writing about. 
I, I like this uh, oh, wrong way, Corrigan. That was I, a great story. I, I, you know, I often think about like the Jim Marshall, the football player that yes. scored a touchdown in the wrong direction. But this guy actually took off for L.A., landed in Ireland. Was he confused or just clever? I mean, he, it was a wonderful story, and it turned out this. to be. When I was a kid, people talked about this guy. They don't anymore. But yeah. uh, he was an, with an anniversary story. I don't do many of them, but it happened to be 80th year. And he, in 1938, he flew, uh, took off for San Diego. Supposedly that was the flight plan. But all his life, he'd admired Lindbergh. He wanted to fly across the Atlantic. And he landed in Ireland. <laughs> now, you don't know. He And his whole life, he maintained, well, I guess I... I guess I made a wrong turn. He became a huge celebrity. America in the Depression really needed something like this to lift us up. He had a parade just as big as Lindbergh's. He became he was in a movie about himself. I didn't know whether it was a joke or whether he was. He was and then I I urge people to watch the video. There's an interview with him on there right after, and he starts to explain it. And if you watch his expression, you'll know. Yeah, oh, that is like so cool. Yeah. <laughs> these are these are just great articles, and and I, I really encourage people to, uh, uh, you know, to check it out. Go to uh, the attic uh, dot space, and you'll mm-hmm. see what we're talking about. If you like, uh, if you like to read, and you like uh, really cool articles. Um, so the uh, so how how is this uh, being received? Uh, you know, this is a uh, you know you're taking a chance when mm-hmm. you spend all this time and divert it all to an online, uh, you know, place, yeah. you know, page. Uh, how's it going? Well, um, it's it's about a half a week uh, of work, and I'm just still doing other writing. So it's not it's I don't consider it a, a terrible burden. I love it, uh, and it's been steadily rising in the strange uh, world of the, of the internet. It's that is entirely writing is something I've done all my life, but promoting uh, and getting on Facebook and going on YouTube, putting up YouTube videos, and uh, going on Twitter and Pinterest and the whole nine yards. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a hard part for me, and I do it as much as I can, and it's managed to draw. It's it's getting bigger. I have more than 500 weekly subscribers now. I have uh, nice. well over nice. 500 likes on Facebook and followers on Facebook, and uh, some contributors. And so it's getting out there a little bit. I've been written up in the Greenfield Recorder, and uh, here I am on Valley Free Radio. Excellent, excellent. So uh, you want to... Uh uh, like uh, like the attic on Facebook, you know, let's mm-hmm. get those likes going, and like I said, contribute on uh, uh, and become a, squ- a subscriber on the attic uh, dot space. Subscribing is free. You just put in your email, and as I say on my uh, pitch, I will give you one email a week, no more. I promise. I know what it's like to be harassed by that. Yeah. <laughs> so one email a week comes Sunday morning, and that it'll tell you what's new. All right, I'm doing mine right now, and I've signed up. So uh, I'm now a subscriber. It's okay. simple. It was that quick. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, what are what are your favorites? I mean, I've uh, you know I've just been kind of you know, checking out the website, and obviously uh, had had mine that really you know caught my attention when you sent us the mm-hmm. info. What what do you really like? I mean, what's yeah? What's what's your thing? Well, I'm as an American historian. Um, amateur. Uh, I have been drawn forever to things that broaden the definition of American history for me. I wrote books about Bread and Roses strike uh, in Lawrence. I wrote a book about Sacco Manzetti. That's broadening it in a rather grim uh, manner, but a book on Freedom Summer. Uh, so I look for places where the American spirit comes through. And uh, for example, I have a, an article, even though I say I don't do politics, I did one on Jeanette Rankin, uh, called the woman who said no to war. You might, your listeners might know that she was elected to Congress, the first woman in Congress. She wound up voting against U.S. involvement in World War One. She got voted out of office. She was back in office thirty years later to vote, twenty years later to vote against World War Two, and she got voted out. But that kind of spirit, that kind of independence. I've got an article here about. Uh, Camping with John and Teddy about the time when John Muir and Teddy Roosevelt went camping in um, in uh, oh, nice. yeah. I've got These are just under history. I've got We Hold the Rock, the incredible and almost forgotten time, although not on Valley Free Radio, when Native Americans took over Alcatraz Island and uh, really jump-started the American uh, Indian movement. And then if I cut to um, to women, I've got an article about Dolores Huerta. I've got an article about, I uh, hope your listeners know who she is. I've got an article about uh, the wonderful documentary Harlan County, USA. 
Uh, Victoria Woodhull, the first woman to run for president in 1872, got an article about Margaret Mead, the psychologist Carol Gilligan, uh, the writer Rebecca Solnit, who has caught my attention, so many people's attention. In arts, I got an article on Edna St. Vincent Millay and one on the poet Philip Levine, the flags of Jasper Johns. Oh, and my humor part, I love Robert Benchley. You can laugh along with Robert Benchley. Excellent. Got a story on J.D. Salinger hitting the beach with the manuscript of Catcher in the Rye on D-Day in his backpack. <laughs> so stories like that. Fantastic. So, uh, you know, we're just about out of time, and I want to thank you so much, uh, Bruce, for coming in. And uh, as I mentioned, Bruce is going to be a reg regular contributor to uh, Kicking It for Peace, Culture, and Education here at Valley Free Radio. Uh, he'll be calling in an article on a weekly basis uh, right, right about the... Uh, uh, kind of 8.30 time. Um, and lastly, I want to talk about just, uh, you know, where you see this going um, and, you know, in the next, over the next few years, you know, what's your, what's your vision for this? Well, I like it, of course, to expand. I mean, it, this little screen uh, is confining. Uh, in spite of the wonderful, expansive resources on the internet, with I have music on there and I have other things, um, there's only so much you can put on a screen when and before people start to start to get lost in it. So there are some limits, but I'm looking to continue these categories. I'm thinking of possibly doing, um, well, I'm going to start some some theme months, not food starting this month, but later on, maybe American Originals or um, Lost in America or those where I do two or three weeks in a row. Um, I plan to uh, continue the lists. I plan to maybe do um, some more things that would reach out and grab you. I realize you have to have, for a new website... You need to have something different every week, not just one article, but when people go back to it, they can't, it's not like an attic where you can rummage around, literally like an <laughs> attic. You do have to have something that catches people's eyes every week. So I'm going to try and get catchier, punchier, and quicker. Outstanding. All right. Well, thank you so much again uh, to Bruce Watson. Uh, and he is, his online weekly magazine is called The Attic, and you'll want to go to uh, theattic.space and uh, become a subscriber uh, and or uh, contribute and certainly go to his uh, Facebook page and get a like in there as well. Uh, so Bruce, uh, thanks again. And I want to say, uh, yeah, yeah, my pleasure. And uh, again, uh, Bruce will be calling in uh, articles uh, going forward here. And I want to say thank you to our Valley Free Radio uh, uh, listeners and Northampton Community Television audience. Uh, we're so happy to have you with us. And uh, thanks to uh, Al Williams, Dave and Jen, and all those folks who uh, helped produce this uh, uh, segment for uh, Northampton Community Television.